So um, I'm going to talk about an old idea that um, actually was brought up by Churchill in 1932 in his book uh, uh, Thoughts and Adventures, where um, he said, well, you know, why grow a whole chicken if you only eat the breast and the wing? And he got the idea, and of course, not completely by himself. He was befriended with uh, Alexis Gorel, the Nobel Prize winning physiologist who kept organs alive at, uh, for the first time ever outside of the body. Um, and um, uh, so um, to introduce the concept of what we were trying to do to make meat out of uh, cultured um, organs or uh, cells. Uh, Here's a question for you. Video for you. How much meat does our world eat in just one day. The numbers are alarming, all the more because current production methods will not be able to meet future demand. If you include the crops grown for animals to eat, currently more than 70% of all arable land is occupied by livestock. Also, keeping livestock for food produces significant amounts of greenhouse gases, such as methane and carbon dioxide. Pigs and cows transform only 15% of vegetable proteins into edible animal proteins, and to produce one kilogram of beef, up to 15,000 liters of water is required. In the near future, both meat and other staple foods are likely to become expensive luxury items. The World Health Organization recently estimated that demand for meat is going to double in the next 40 years. But a pioneering new technology is being developed that offers a solution to all those problems. And this is how it works. First, muscle tissue is harvested by biopsy in a small and harmless procedure. Next, the biopsy is cut into minuscule pieces to separate the muscle fibers and cells. Now, let's take a closer look at this tissue through the microscope. The muscle tissue consists of fat cells and muscle cells, both of which are used to produce cultured meat. By dissecting the muscle cells, stem cells are harvested and cultured. The cells start dividing. Eventually, from one muscle stem cell, more than one trillion stem cells can be grown. These cells naturally merge together to form so-called myotubes, which are no longer than 0.3 millimeters. The muscle is then grown by lining them up between two Velcro anchor points. Muscle's innate tendency to contract causes it to put on bulk, growing into a small piece of muscle tissue. From one small piece of tissue, this pioneering technique can produce more than a trillion strands. When all of these little pieces of muscle are then layered together and combined with cultured pieces of fat, you actually get exactly the same product as we started with, meat. But there's more to this meat than meets the eye. The technology has some healthy benefits too. It allows control over the level of fat content. It can eradicate human disease contracted from livestock, and the meat can be given the perfect balance of necessary nutrients. What's more, the technique benefits the environment too. It can lead the way to cruelty-free meat with a production process that is environmentally friendly, providing a sustainable meat source ready for the demands of the future. The end result is meat, exactly as we know it, but produced in a far more efficient, sustainable, and animal-friendly way. As new methods are found to scale up production, cultured beef could be on its way to a dinner plate near you. Okay, so um, um, if this is true, where would the gelatin then come from? Because the gelatin, the other uh, person that you are using, is coming from animal bones. And uh, that's by far the largest uh, production system. So um, 
you, when we uh, start producing meat a different way and, and get rid of at least most of the animals, then gelatin would become a scarce item. So you should look for another gig, I guess. Um, I suggest to use uh, agar <laughs> instead. Um, anyway, for um, uh, meat being produced this way, you have now seen the reasons why. There are important reasons to do this. Not be many people realize that, but we are facing a meat crisis very quickly now. Um, uh, so there are important reasons to do this, and there is a technology that is um, capable of replacing meat production, uh, albeit that, it, that we are still far away from getting into a dinner plate near you. In fact, at the end of November, we will have the first hamburger, which costs about 250,000 euro. Um, <laughs> two um, technicians of mine um, have worked on that for about three months, uh, growing 40 billion cells. And um, um, so it's, it's still quite a labor intensive and not very efficient process. But for it to succeed, we figured that there were two major items. It needs to be efficient. You have seen that the animals are very inefficient, so we need to be more efficient. And it needs to mimic uh, meat. We have meat substitutes galore, um, but there is some craving in us that wants to really eat meat. Um, so we need to make uh, meat and not a uh, substitute. So in order to make it efficient, there are a lot of variables that you can work with, and we have uh, tried a fair number of them. Uh, you can work with the culture medium, with uh, the, uh, we, we have to get rid of the serum eventually, which is doable. Um, we have already shown that, but it's, it still needs a little bit of work. You need to go quicker from 2D to 3D culture, and you can use uh, potentially salt water uh, algae to feed the cells, because we still need to feed the cells. Uh, currently, for this hamburger, we need 60 billion cells, which is 200 of these flasks, these plastic flags that are um, non-recyclable, um, 10 layers um, with, uh, with cells, and we need 200 of those which fit in a large uh, incubator. And if you stick to this process, which we're using right now, eventually for every 10 people you would need a 25,000 liter, which is a big swimming pool, uh, 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 incubator to um, accommodate that. So this is our incubator right now with all these flats of cells, these, these 60 billion cells that we are growing. And this is just to point out, this, this guy is four times as big as this one. And this contains actually much more cells because this is now the 3D tissue, those strips that you saw in, uh, in the movie that we are harvesting, freezing, and then glued together to form a, a hamburger. So we do need to, uh, uh, to feed them uh, sugars, proteins, and fatty acids, which, gives, uh, which, which is mentioned also in the video, the opportunity to play a little bit with it and to ma maybe even make healthier meat with polyunsaturated fatty acids. Uh, or we could use saltwater algae to uh, grow them. And the first factory could, for instance, be at the mouth of the Mississippi, where there is an algae dead zone. We just fish out all the algae out of the ocean and feed it to ourselves. Um, and if you do that, and there are a lot of assumptions here, you can reduce the number of the amount of water and land and energy uh, tremendously um, uh, by producing the meat this way. So we also need to make it really like meat and nothing else, not, not really a substitute. So we need to think about taste, color, and uh, texture, mouth feel, if you like. That's not going to be uh, very easy. One. A uh, nice thing about these cells is that they organize the tissue themselves. So we don't need to do a whole lot about them. If you put them in a gel um, in between two anchor points, after 24 hours they have built a muscle in between those anchor points. And they will start to bulk up uh, protein and they will start to contract actually uh, and start to look really, really like uh, muscle. Of course, you can also zap them, electrically stimulate them, which is not very energy efficient, I admit. But then under the microscope, it looks exactly like a skeletal muscle uh, fiber. So you can mimic the exact same tissue um, in vitro. Um, and of course, we are uh, conditioning them um, in various ways to get from this animal to uh, this one. Uh, this, by the way, is a Blanc Bleu Belge, which is a cow that has a natural mutation that was discovered by the Belgians uh, just after the World War. And uh, they decided to um, breed with it, and it has a mutation in myostatin, which limits the, um, myostatin usually limits the protein uh, um, uh, production by uh, muscle cells, the hypertrophy by muscle cells. So if you don't have that 
um, you get these uh, animals, which is not very natural. They cannot g give birth naturally, so you need to do cesarean section. But now 95% of all the, the meat in Belgium is uh, uh, taken from these, uh, well, this is a bull, but from these uh, animals. And we are taking actually the stem cells from it to see whether we can. Uh, this is a contracting muscle. Um, so if you, uh, it contracts by itself, but if you stimulate it, it contracts a little bit more and it starts to make more protein. So you get better to the uh, area where you need to be, to the real meat. These are the strands in between the two Velcro strips, by the way, also from the local Tesco. Um, and uh, so they develop in about three weeks in between those strips and then we harvest them. Right now we actually grow them in donuts, so we don't even need the Velcro anymore. Um, but it's the same principle. They need these anchor points to uh, bulk up uh, protein. And of course, they are still pretty white. There is no blood in there. Um, the, the red in blood is hemoglobin when it's exposed to oxygen. Um, in muscle, actually, there's not really a whole lot of blood. And, uh, but there is myoglobin, which is a protein that's very similar to hemoglobin. And it turns red when exposed to oxygen. And if you just grow these cells under low oxygen conditions, you get a five-fold increase in uh, myoglobin production. So you can play with um, color, with all these variables, all these culture variables, to get to a product that um, eventually is the same as, uh, as meat. Um, we also, uh, it was reported that you could add caffeine, so coffee, to these hamburgers, which would be great because you would, would stay awake after a hamburger. Um, some people couldn't eat them at night, of course, but. Um, uh, uh, but unfortunately, it didn't really improve the, the myoglobin concentration a lot, so we forgot about that idea. And you might think, you know, it's not only muscle uh, meat, it's also fat, and it's um, uh, bone, maybe, and it's uh, um, uh, even uh, bone marrow. Can you make that as well? Uh, of course we can. Actually, um, fat has already been grown. We know what to do, how to, how to grow that. This is, a, this is not an experiment by ourselves, but um, from somebody else who in four weeks grew a, a tiny piece of uh, um, uh, fat from fat stem cells. And uh, um, this is our own example where all the, the red stuff is all fat from uh, adipose tissue uh, derived stem cells from that same biopsy. Um, so how are you going to produce it? Well, you could potentially produce it in your own kitchen. Um, these stem cells that we use that replicate um, they survive um, freeze drying. So you could order your uh, little uh, bag of, this is salmon, a uh, bag of uh, stem cells from any uh, animal or creature um, from the internet and then start to grow your meat in your own um, uh, kitchen. Of course, you need to know six weeks in advance what you're going to eat because it takes a while. <laughs> but it's doable. So one of the big questions is, who is going to eat this? Um, and if you ask uh, people in the streets of London, so randomly, you know, are you going to eat meat from a factory or from a laboratory? They say, you know, are you kidding me? Um, but if you rephrase that question, and you, well, you know, let's see, 20 30, 20, 30 years from now, if you hit the supermarket and you see these two products in the, in the shell, on the shelves, and they are exactly the same, and they taste the same, and the quality is the same, but this is the, the, the real thing. It's now four times as expensive because it has an ecotex and there's this nasty label on it that animals have suffered for that product. And it's exactly the same and the price is right. What are you going to do, right? Um, and I think it will eventually be, um, uh, that will be a problem that can be uh, conquered. There are a couple of other issues. Of course, we need to industrialize it, scale it up, which is uh, quite a challenge, but uh, it can be done. Um, you can make them from different tissues. I have already shown that. Um, and then eventually, um, <laughs> this is where you end up, right? You can, with a complete clear conscience, keep eating your hamburger. Thank you very much. <laughs>